Hey everyone, this is Tony, Dungeon Master of D&D Raw, and today we will be going into the story of Boulder's journey to become a guardian of the Rigorum. It's been more than 24 hours since they left Anvil. Do you think they're all right? Yes, I'm sure they'll be fine. I manipulated the portal so a tunnel could take them straight to Zaraton. So long as they don't stray from the path I set, they should be fine. <laughs> I never did tell you the story of when I met Zaraton, did I? So long ago, I almost forgot what it was like not being bound to the soul of the earth. <laughs> well, like I mentioned before, I was actually born in the Rigorum. And while I don't remember much of my mother... My father taught me that our proximity to the Earth portal made me the Genasi that I am. You know, he was a guardian of this area as well, but he was beginning to tire of the responsibility by the time I had come of age. He taught me everything I know in terms of caring for the land and learning how the land could take care of me. <laughs> well, no, we, we didn't spend much time getting to know the Lady of Spirits, and... Bai was much more present at the time. The Orc clans hadn't yet united under the banner of the Nightmare Skull, and the Fortuneborn at the time was preoccupied with just holding on to his territory. So, we had a bit of safety from them back then. When I was old enough, though, my father taught me some rune magic and its connection to the plane of Earth. When I was skilled enough, he said we could travel to the plane see what it was we were really guarding against and where the source of our power came from. <laughs> yes, Anvil, we did. We traveled to the plane of Earth, and we started our own journey to go and see Zarhaton. My father didn't have as powerful a connection as I did to the plane, so his path through the portal was not as secured as mine. It took us days of exploration through those tunnels and tried to get an understanding of the various entities that existed on the plane, what sort of disposition they would have to us from the material world. My father was incredibly skilled with magic, or at the time I believed he was, though he didn't have the natural affinity to the earth that I did. Here it felt like I came home. It took almost no effort to manipulate the earth in a more skillful and impressive manner, than my father ever could, and in my youth, I tried to show off all that I could do on this plane. The want to show off this skill led to some distractions. It led me to witness the terrifying power of the Tao. It was a crystal entity I was observing, and I was trying to show my father how the light refracted off of it, and I didn't hear the Tao coming. My father was knocked unconscious, and I was bound, and both of us brought to their jade city, built within the largest jade crystal I had ever seen, and probably will ever see, considering the plane itself is made up of earth and gems and rock. Most of the buildings in the Dao city were just made up of the crystal, as if they carved the buildings around it, using the outer shell as a wall to surround their entire capital. It was molded by the Tao, magically. Their link to the plane was absolute, other than Zaratons himself. I had an opportunity here to be impressed by the majesty that the city had to offer, but before I could lose myself to its glamour, I was imprisoned with my father. We were told we were trespassing and would receive sentencing. My magic wasn't usable here. My power had been cut off in this cell. My father and I were eventually separated. We were to pay off our fine and mine for precious metals for the Tao. You lose track of time on the plane of Earth. I'm uncertain how long it was that we were there. There is no day and night cycle. It is just darkness. But eventually, after a long time, a Tao woman came during one of my shifts, told me to leave my tools and follow her. I no longer had any will to resist at this point, not the way that I do now. <laughs> I've seen what the Tao do to those who do resist. 
and I've seen the horrors that they're willing to inflict. So I just follow the Tao woman. I was so focused on just following that it took me a moment to realize she led me out of the city, which I hadn't been out since I had arrived. Once out of sight of the entrance, she removed my shackles. She didn't have long to explain this, but she was my mother. She came to the material plane years ago, said she fell in love with my father, but knew she could not remain on the material plane indefinitely. She returned to the people and used her powers to hide the portal to, to our home with her own powerful rune magic. And my father used his magic to hide the portal on our side. She explained that I needed to go and seek out the Elder Elemental Zaraton. <laughs> yes, the one that Auric is searching for now. Zaraton would grant me strength I would need to defend my home. She also explained that my father did not make it. He pushed his luck in trying to get in touch with her, but it cost him his life. The Tao were not forgiving. My anger at the moment was pointless. I was not strong enough to face the Tao even if I had time to rest, and my mother was giving me an opportunity to be free. I had so many questions, Anvil, but life sometimes doesn't give you a chance to find those answers. So I did flee. I fled before the Tao realized I had escaped. My mother had only so much pull within their society, no sense getting her in even more trouble than she probably already was. So I climbed away. Higher and higher and far away from the city. I'm sure the path down is different than when I got there. The tunnels of the plane of Earth are ever-changing, making them a bit confusing. <laughs> yes, Anvil, that's why it took me so long to craft the magic necessary for the tunnel to Zaraton. I wanted at least some consistent path for them, even if the landscape is disorienting. <laughs> oh, the first challenge. Yes, if it's the same as when I was there, there's a Myrmidon. It's a powerful elemental who basically just says get past him. That was not much of a first challenge, I thought, but got past him all the same. I pushed through those challenge and my natural affinity to the earth made it relatively easy. I even met a kind stone giant named Granite. He guarded the second and third challenges. A high climb up a sheer cliff. Again, not too difficult considering I could mold the earth around my hand, but I was tired. And by the time I had completed the final challenge, I stood before the great entity, Zaraton, and really didn't know why I was there. I broke down and explained that I originally came to the plane of earth to learn where my power came from. I was told to seek out the Elder Elemental, but it had not been fully explained to me why. My father had only explained that I could be strengthened here. My mother explained that Zaraton would guide me. I just wanted to protect the material plane so that the Tao would never be able to invade it. So in a final moment of utter exhaustion, I exposited to this mountain of a beast and asked it to help me as it had my father. And Zaraton's memory is long, and he agreed, but he did not just bind a portion of his essence to me. He did not just give me the soul of the earth, but he taught me how to use its full potential. So I trained and learned, studied and mastered the element of earth. I learned how to completely bind myself to the plane, what it meant when my father said that we had a connection to the portal here. And by the time Zaratan bid me to return home, I was no longer the child that had entered the plane. Zaratan had given me a gift in the power that he presented, and enough knowledge and wisdom to be able to contend with beings such as the old Fae and even the Lady of Spirits, as long as I was careful. So I returned home, but I found it overrun with elemental beasts and the forces of the Fortuneborn, who had decided to try to expand his territory in our absence. In my absence. So I showed him what I could do now, and drove his people off my lands, using several of the elementals who were friendly to aid me while returning others back to their home plane. I took back my family's lands, Use the ritual of guardianship to bind myself here and to the portal that resides below. 
Over time, I've renewed and reinforced the wars my parents had placed on both sides of the portal in order to keep this plane safe. But no, Anvil, I never did see either of my parents again. Well, I can't just sit here dwelling on the past with you, as great of a listener as you are. I can't just sit here worrying about Rumble Squad. I need to trust that they will return shortly. In the meantime, um, I should go and check on Elaine. She said she would have started making that lake she has been promising once she achieved full guardianship. Maybe she'll have a small puddle by today. Enjoy your lunch, Anvil. Thank you all for listening to Boulder's Tale and the Trials in the Plain of Elemental Earth. Don't forget you can check us out on all of your favorite podcatchers. You can leave us a review on iTunes, or you can even contact us more directly, our Twitter at Rules is Written, or email me directly at dm at dndraw.com. We love to hear from all of our fans. And don't forget to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash dndraw. And I hope to see you all next time in the world of Ostia.